All right, story time. About six months ago, we finally crossed the finish line on what we would consider, I think, our first like legitimate batch of production title caster electric guitars. Mm -hmm. We even had a, a little glass of scotch to celebrate and everything. Those guitars were spoken for, so we were excited to get them packed up in their cases and shipped off to all their new owners, which in and of itself here at Driftwood Guitars is something a little bit different because up until very recently, everything was kind of handled face to face with most of our clients. And yeah. So now we find ourselves in a position where we're shipping guitars all over the world. Uh, really cool. Just when we thought that we were past that batch of guitars, what happened? Uh, uh, our worst nightmare. <laughs> it was our worst nightmare happened. We got two emails from uh, two of our customers. These uh, title casters that we worked so hard for, they were so beautiful, they were perfect, they got damaged in shipping. The damage in shipping. Uh, two of our customers out of those six. So that's about, the same that's day. A, that's a 33% uh, yeah, uh, failure rate. Which, I remember vividly when we were putting them in the case, you know, you do the thing where you, you, you like pack the case full of all of like mm -hmm. paper and bubble wrap or whatever you need mm -hmm. to do to loosen the strings, mm -hmm. but like you're constantly freaking out because you know that this guitar is going to go into the hands of the notorious UPS. It's it's, it's someone worker. who does not get paid enough to actually care about yeah. how well the guitar moves across the country. Yeah, we yeah. even wrote for Geely on it and everything. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> the damage that occurred on both of these guitars was identical to one another. Mm -hmm. And and what was happening was, uh, mind you, these were in these really nice hard shell cases that we have custom made for us that we were stoked to send out. Yeah. Um, but the damage was happening, I think, the guitars were being chucked in the box and on the face down side, the the selector switch mm -hmm. got pushed in because it banged against the inside surface of the hard, a hard shell case. Uh, and in both situations needed the switch replaced. Yep. And the both finish of them, repaired. the finish repair, and that yeah. was the real big one. Yeah, but for, for Chris and I, it kind of sparked uh, a little bit of a conversation for us because obviously 33% uh, of our guitar is getting damaged you can't function like that. That's no. not, those are not good numbers. And so um, the, the conversation that sparked for us, though, we wanted to look at AR, how we packed them, and, and we, we definitely changed that up. But also we wanted to talk about the cases that we were sending them out in because I, I know for, for me personally, I have a real, uh, I grew up with this, there's a real solid connotation with soft shell cases being cheap. Anytime you see a student show up to their first guitar lesson, they always have always. a soft case. And anytime, as soon as I could, I wanted a hard case for all of my instruments. There's yeah, a, yeah there's a, a real culture around it's that. Kind of a, a little bit, yeah. Yeah. I have some uh, some of my own musician friends to thank for uh, changing my perspective about it a little bit because I started to see cases at gigs whenever I was playing out uh, out and about. I started seeing some cases in the hands of musicians that I really trusted that weren't the just gig. yeah they like, <laughs> like you're talking about like. Yeah, real shows road dogs. A year. Yeah, um, yeah. They, uh, they these cases started showing up, and something changed where they were no longer thin and cheap. All of a sudden, now they're um, the padding on them is a lot better. There, there, there are a lot more reasons to to look at them and take them seriously. And and you guys, if you follow our channel, have seen me in specifically the guitar breakdown videos where we do reviews of the factory guitars. Every time there's a soft shell case in those, yeah. you'll hear me be like, eh, but it's a soft shell case. And I'm like all excited about a hard shell case. But if you pay close attention, you'll see that there is a moment in one of our videos where we do have a hard shell case. And I'm kind of bummed because it's not as nice as some of the soft shell cases we've seen. Mm -hmm. We realized maybe we needed to check our prejudice at yes. the door. <laughs> okay, I think the first thing that we need to do is identify what it is that we're looking for in any good case, right? Yeah, I, I think the biggest assurance that we need is will a soft shell case protect the guitar uh, as well as a hard shell case will? Because that's the whole reason the case exists is for protection, right? Yeah, so, I mean, yeah. that is the the main reason why you mm -hmm. have a case. I, I will push back a little bit on it and say that a case also has to um, offer a level of portability. And so you have this amount of diminishing returns of yeah. like protection versus portability. They tend to drop off with one another. Right, right, right. The protection issue that we had with, with the guitars, mm -hmm. what we found ourselves doing every time we have to ship a guitar is that you spend all this time like getting the case, the guitar ready inside of the case, right? Like yeah. we're packing it full of paper and peanuts and all this stuff to get the guitar safe, which to me tells me inherently the case is not doing a good enough job of holding the guitar in a way mm -hmm. that uh, is going to keep it supported and suspended in a play, in a way that I would say more blunt force trauma is not going to cause any damage. Exactly. So let's 
Let's show, the show them. What yeah, we, let's show them where we landed. What on we've this landed kit. on. Yeah. Um, what Matt's bringing over here is um, the Mono Brand um, Vertical Ultra Soft Shell Case. I do want to say before we get into it, th this is not a plug for Mono cases. This is not. They didn't pay us. Yeah, anything. they didn't. We we paid money for the case uh, yeah. cases, and uh, it's just what we landed on. And we landed on it for a reason. But what we're talking about here is just more of a general discussion about what goes into a, a good case. Mm -hmm. Okay, the biggest thing that made us realize that this may be the way to do it was the realization that what we were essentially doing when we were prepping a guitar for shipping um, was kind of making one of these inside of a hard shell case. We were having to support the back of the neck with um, like packing paper. Mm -hmm. uh, and then anybody who's ever shipped a guitar uh, with any thought at all has knows that like underneath the headstock, you wanna either jam a whole bunch of, of kitchen towels or paper towels or something. You wanna basically create this pillow all around the guitar. Mm -hmm. uh, and in the end- Anything um, to absorb shock. Exactly, because it's blunt force trauma that's the big thing. So what I wanna do is I'm gonna open up this case. We actually have a title caster inside of it. And I think just upon uh, us opening it, you're gonna see quickly how much more protection this guitar has right now. All right, so what we have is, um, first of all, this amazing like cradle system that's on here, which you see in a lot of guitars now. In fact, the um, Gibson G45 that we did, the case that came with that guitar had mm -hmm. this inside of it. It also has the same cradle in the front, which is absolutely just gonna keep that guitar really stabilized. And then the whole thing has got this like, is that like an inch it's or like, an inch and a quarter of padding? Inch and a quarter, easy, yeah. but feel like it's almost like a rubbery. It's not just foam. Mm -hmm. It's a shock it absorbent shock. Yeah. Uh, material. And then the guitar, it doesn't just like drop in here like a bag. You have to like push it in yeah, to get the guitar to go inside of it. It's a very, very tight fit, which is nice. And then the bottom of it, which is a big thing, the bottom of the case here, which you would never see on a hard shell, is this, this section down here. Um, what you're seeing a lot of soft shell case manufacturers do as well. And it's designed yeah. for that, you know, that blunt force drop it on its bottom end. And trauma. this is also a uh, water resistant. All too. water resistant. I've got a I've got a, a backpack that I keep all my uh, my cables and all my uh, sometimes pedals or whatever. And uh, it's a um, Klein, you know, the electrician's yeah. bag. It's got one of these. And I love it because anytime I'm playing and it's raining I, or out in the parking lot at a gig, I set my bag down. Yeah, I don't care. Yeah. Set it down. You don't care. And the zipper on this is all water resistant. Uh, I wouldn't say it's waterproof, but it has the rubber seals on it to keep any water from getting in there. So just to, upon initial inspection, putting the guitar in here, I feel more comfortable if I, I'm not going to, but if I wanted to, I could take this zipped up and I'd mm -hmm. chuck it over into the corner over there and know without a doubt the, yeah. the guitar is absolutely fine. I promise you I couldn't say that uh, with a hard shell case. Mm -hmm. I just couldn't. Yeah. Not only would I be worried about the guitar probably maybe has some damage in it, but the case itself has probably got some damage on it too. <laughs> and on top of all of that protection that this provides, it also offers what is, I think, the second most important reason why you would consider uh, a nice hard shell case. And to me, that is uh, environmental protection, protecting mm -hmm. it from humidity, um, cold and heat. Uh, yeah. A case like this is like a giant um, insulated thermos for the guitar to go inside of. Um, and I'm not nearly as concerned as you would think you would need to be on maybe the soft shell cases of yesteryear. Yeah, you and know? you said this one time, the only thing that this doesn't offer you is that you could not stand on top of this, but you wouldn't do that for a hard shell case You wouldn't anyways. do that for a hard shell case. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's the gimmicky thing, right? It's the yeah. thing that all the, the you know, the, the, the case manufacturers, that they do. Mm -hmm. uh, it's nice to know that if you needed to drive over your guitar, you could. I mean, I, I say that kind of passively, but I, I definitely have, I've known people who've accidentally run over their guitars, you know, God, which, after, oh. you know, after oh. a gig, you leave the guitar on the ground uh, as you're, as you're loading all yeah, your stuff. Yeah, it's, and, it's dark and yeah. it's late and you're tired and yeah. But guess what? In both cases where that happened, they were in hard shell cases mm -hmm. and they got destroyed. So yeah. it would have happened. Only, I've seen <laughs> Calton. Calton's the only case yes. company that I, that's actually that if you go look on their front You're page. Gonna go <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was like a guy in a Jeep yeah. or an SUV or something like that that ran over it. Yeah. But, so on top of all the benefits, the other thing that this offers that you just don't have, you can't find in, the, in a hard shell case is the storage, which is just mm -hmm. like a, as, as somebody who, either whether you're just a student and you're going to lessons or you're a working musician, you know, any hard soft shell case these days is going to have awesome options for storage. You know, there's room in here for a laptop if you want. Yeah. Most cases these days you have room for up to a laptop or a large tablet. Um, pockets up top here. Um, the for pens and pencils and cell phones, a business card, or, or just an identification, yeah. all that stuff. And once again, that's just this particular case, but most soft shell cases these days have them. 
And all of that is to, to take us to a point where we realize that, yeah, we're going to do the thing that is a little bit contrary to what the industry is doing. And that is send out a high-end boutique guitar in a, the best, as far yeah. as we can find, soft shell case that money can buy. Mm -hmm. You know, this thing's offering... We wouldn't be putting a title caster in a soft shell case just to save money. In fact... We're not saving any money by switching to these. We're switching to these because they offer more protection, and we're very confident with that. Uh, but I think that the, the point of this video is is to challenge, I think, every guitar owner. Uh, like we were challenged. Yeah, I mean. It, well, and, and to that end, leave us a comment if you agree or disagree. Tell us what your experience is with soft shell cases, if you like them or hate them. But uh, for us right now, um, at least for the time being, moving forward, and all this could change, who knows? The next uh, few that we ship out, uh, we might find something wrong with this. We're always evolving. Yeah. We're always changing. But right now, the discussion that we've been having, and you're in on this now too, is that uh, soft shell cases are... They're kind of awesome. Yeah. They're, they're, <laughs> they're, they're, a, they're a lot better than they used to be. And B, maybe uh, the guitar world needs to be having a more open discussion about them in general. Yeah. No matter what you do with the case, it's going to be compromised. Mm -hmm. You're going to have a compromise either in protection versus portability. So that's the conversation I yeah. think that we'd love to have in the comment section is is other than the fact that you yeah. can't shoot this with an AR-15 or drive a truck over yeah. it, what disadvantages does this offer other than just the general stigma of a soft shell case? Mm -hmm. You know, so yeah, yeah I hope this uh, helped you guys uh, at least kind of go, hmm, and uh, we'll see y'all in the next one.